This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Diane Brewster. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful afternoon? I'm doing very well. It's a gorgeous day here in Auckland. Oh, sweet. Sweet. When you say Auckland, Auckland where? Auckland, New Zealand. Wow! I had to be sure. Wow. So what day, What time is it there now? I mean, it's like 3.25 p.m. here. What time is it there? It's 8.30 in the morning. My teenagers are still asleep. I have the house to myself. Oh, you're in my future then. How does it look? Glorious. Love it. <laughs> well, do tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history. Well, we connected over LinkedIn, so I'm assuming it was um, my amateur podcasting that connected us. Oh, there we go. Why did you call it amateur podcasting? Well, because I've only recently um, gotten into it and um, did it through a lot of soul-searching and awkwardness. Ooh, that, those are some of the best podcast episodes. <laughs> 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 so tell us about your podcast, please. I'm one of several podcasters um, on the SciGest series. Um, SciGest is a series of digestible science episodes um, through plant and food research, who I work for. And I got into doing it because I'm naturally kind of awkward at explaining my science to non-scientists. And in these days and times, it's really important that we scientists kind of get over that and, and find ways of explaining our science really well to the public. So this was a way of um, getting through that and helping other scientists to um, to better explain their science and be more um, approachable and digestible. I love it. Digestible definitely fits, doesn't it? Love it, pun intended. Wonderful. So who did you learn that ability to uh, step up to the plate? Despite fears, despite it being something new, who did you learn that from? It was a little bit of a mixture of the um, of the other podcasters around me who were all uh, very talented, uh, open, um, wonderful people and official training from a media coach called Louise Pagonis. All right, all right. Was it fun though? Uh, probably not the starting, but as you got going, <laughs> right, was it fun? It was definitely fun. Um, there's something about having that little microphone in front of you and, and asking great questions of people and, and seeing them engage and really sort of drawing out the details. It's, it, it is a lot of fun. That's wonderful. So tell us a bit more about the research you do. Wow. Food science. Wow. Come on. Um, we do a lot of different kinds of science at Plant and Food Research. Um, we have evolved from what was the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, and we've had a couple of different uh, restructurings, and now we're Plant and Food Research. We're a Crown Research Institute, um, so we're partly government-funded and partly industry-funded. Mm, well, and amazing. so um, sure. my, my particular institute... Um, does all sorts of everything from post-harvest research through to um, medical research. Uh, I'm currently um, getting involved in biosensor work mm. and um, I'm a proteomics specialist, so I study proteins. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Wow. Look at you switching to the podcast. I'm proud of you. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Where's the best place for someone to connect with you or even follow the podcast? Uh, well, we have um, a link to our whole Sajis series on our plant and food website, so that's probably the easiest way of going about it. Uh, or we are on um, iTunes or, oh gosh, I forgot what the other one is. Stitcher. Stitcher? Spotify? No. Spotify? Yep. All right, there we I go. I think we're on Spotify. We're definitely on iTunes. She's definitely an amateur podcaster. Wow, <laughs> I love it. All right, so plantandfood.co.nz is where you can get that. Tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Mm, that's probably getting very focused on positive mindsets, not only for myself, but for other people. 
Hmm. How do the both interrelate uh, in terms of the food you eat and keeping a positive mindset? Well, as we know, there's a lot of research coming out that um, links our gut health to our mental health. So your you are what you eat is, is becoming more and more true. Um, and having a positive mindset, well, I mean, it, it's good for all aspects of your life. Hmm. How does it make you feel? Oh, it makes me feel present and focused and, and helpful. Um, willing to take the time to to notice what people need and to help them with it. Why would you suggest other people do that? Keep a positive mindset. Attitudes, everything, and it's infectious. Um, you've heard the phrase, you know, if you see someone who doesn't have a smile, give them yours. It really does work. Hmm. And there's nothing better in a in a um, a stressed workplace than someone just smiling at you and saying everything's okay. Love it. Amazing audience. Again, you're hearing it live from Diane Brewster. You can check her out at theplantandfood.co.nz. The podcast is in there with her episodes as well. You'll see it on the sidebar on the left. Just click podcast here. Yeah? Oh, I love it. I'm definitely going to dive in there and see. I mean, like you've intrigued me by saying amateur podcaster. Uh, but I think the topic is your strong point. So it'll be interesting to hear what that sounds like. I'm going to check it out, right, tonight. All right. Fantastic. Wonderful. Well, let's switch gears for a moment now. Let me invite you now into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Diana, what's your mm-hmm. earliest childhood memory? That would have to be a bad dream that I had about um, Sesame Street characters, Ernie and Bert. Ooh. Why do you think it's so clear? Well, I loved Sesame Street, um, but I was a little perturbed by the way Ernie and Bert would steal each other's noses. (laughs) How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? (laughs) <laughs> well, I haven't stolen a nose for a very long time. It put me off nose stealing. <laughs> you know, I never thought about it. Like, it's it's really a scary thing to lose a nose, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. All right, my friend. If we fast forward it to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? That has to be Shout by Tears for Fears. All right, so there are the tears, you know, the nose, the eyes. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Yes. Diane, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? No, not anymore. Do you have children? Well, you said yes. You have children, right? They're sleeping. Do you believe in God? Yes. Um, Not in man-made religion, but I do definitely believe in a kind of higher power. But I haven't defined that in my head yet. Do you have an inner circle of friends? A very small one, yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No, I don't. How about three hours a week? Yes, what about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, it's probably more than eight hours a day. I spend a lot of time in front of a computer. Do you, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Diane Brewster, what would you say that is? That's a tough one for me, focusing in on unique, because a lot of things came to mind, but they weren't my statement. They were just quoting other people. Um, But I guess what comes to mind most is do what you can to live your best life and make it a little better for those around you. Um, Be of service and make a difference. Hmm. Be of service and make a difference. Love it. Again, Diane, this was such a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Just that I, I love your work. I love the goals that you've had. Um, I love the podcasts that you've done so far. And you've driven across America. Now it's time for you to come down under and visit us. I love it. I love it. Yeah, definitely. It's on the map. It's on the whiteboard written down. My wife is actually with a child, as the Vikings say. I got caught up on Congratulations. Netflix, yes, thank you. And so we're 
taking this year off of traveling. But next year, let's see if I get to meet you face to face, Diane. You'd be very welcome to stay with us. I appreciate that. Diane Brewster, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convoys with Angel Jones. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.